Hi everyone, and welcome to BGR. My name's John. Today I'm going to give you a detailed look at the G1W camera. Yeah, this is it. Now, I find that uh, after I posted my first couple of videos on the G1W, that a few people have had um, questions. And I figure, well, you know what, why don't I just go through the whole thing step by step by step and uh, give you a detailed uh, instruction manual, like a video instruction. What I'm going to do is I'm going to index each thing so that you can easily go down into the description and you just have to click on the blue uh, timestamp in every description, <coughs> excuse me, in every description, and that'll bring you directly to the part of the video that pertains to what you need help with. Um, just a few things before you go there, just let's knock off a couple of things. Number one, you cannot charge your G1W camera off of your computer. You need to plug it in with the included power cord right here, plug it into your camera, and then plug this into your 12 volt cigarette lighter. Otherwise, your unit will not charge. Number two, you need to uh, have the unit plugged in okay again with the 12 volt or run it off its own power now some of you might have battery power or capacitor power and I strongly recommend that you plug it into the it means you have to do this out in the car unless you have a power source inside the home which I do so that's why I can do this in my home uh, it, you have to do it on your car so bring your smartphone and then come back to the video and start up again and then you can click to the part you want unless you think you can remember uh, the, any of the parts that you need to get to without the video. Okay, so because if you start your menu up and without the batteries, uh, well, without the batteries, without being plugged in, I should say, uh, you might get half through, halfway through uh, fixing or, or adjusting or making changes in a certain option and then the camera will die out on you and you'll have to go back and do it over again, okay? So the best thing is to do is when you're gonna do some changing in this, use this, and then that way you have no problems uh, with the battery or the capacitors dying out. Number three, if you've ordered um, a battery, or if you ordered a capacitor, you've got a battery, vice versa. In the big picture, and it, it really doesn't matter. If you got batteries, you got batteries. If you got a capacitor, you got a capacitor. Yeah, okay, you probably paid more for the capacitor, and they kind of sneak you in the batteries. And it's kind of hard to tell unless you open the unit. I don't suggest opening the unit because there's little things in there that are extremely sensitive to any voltage spike and actually you touching it and uh, giving it a little bit of a static shock, you know, it just wipe, you know, kill the whole thing and then it, well, it's your fault. It really doesn't matter whether you have capacitors or batteries because the unit is meant to be plugged in and work when the car is on. Um, so it really has no need for the batteries capacitors yes of course if you get into an accident all right and the power is shut off to the camera you could lose that last file which could pretty much have everything th uh, that pertains to that accident in it so um, I would suggest that you set your camera to shut off when the power is off all right uh, don't put any delay on it this way when the power is shut off there's usually even in a it was even a battery this is the one basically that this pertains to when your batteries die out on these units and they no longer work anymore um you, you should still have a few seconds for the camera to say okay I've, the, the 12 volts been disconnected it's time to shut down and it'll t shut down in a in a proper way to save those files otherwise if the batteries are finished and when you unplug the unit and the unit shuts off that last file is corrupted and there's no way to get a, a video on your computer like you can download the file onto your computer but your computer's going to say well you know file corrupted unable to read file <laughs> so this is something you want to take note of and and not uh not um <clears throat> rely on these things working you know in, a, in that case all right without delay let's get started with, uh, let me see, we've already done one and two. Uh, we'll call this little uh, troubleshooting with the power and the freezing up number three. So let's get on with number four. All right, number four. Uh, the thing, the question was, uh, my camera stops recording 
when my stop my car stops at a light <clears throat> all right now one of the possible causes of this is that you have the motion detector turned on simple fix turn it off let's see how okay you have your camera powered up and see the little red light flashing there means your camera is recording first we have to stop it from recording so we click this red light stops flashing right go into the menu that's this button here click that now excuse me because this is a little confusing I'm doing this backwards all right so now we go all the way down to the next one and it says motion detector all right so we click uh, I think it's this one select on or off you can use this to put it on or this to use it off I suggest you turn it off select problem fixed now on to number five all right so you want to know how to get files from your uh, your digital camera excuse the light I'm just working with uh, regular light plus my computer is making it a little darker um, you want to get uh, images or video from this onto your computer so what you do you take the this is not this is not the supplied cord uh, I have my own from my digital video camera that you're watching this on right now um, so it actually offers power to the unit charges the battery and <laughs> go figure out huh? so you have this little light will show up the screen should come up automatically and it'll say whoops Jeez, I get all disoriented here. You should see uh, mass storage. Okay, you click this button to select. All right, computer just made a sound, so we can move that aside now. We don't need the camera anymore. Uh, let's just zoom in a bit here. Not too much. All right, so we'll go to open file. Open, open file open folder to view files we'll click on that and then we go to DCIM okay, so, yeah, you can see that eh? so we'll double click on that now you have two files here it doesn't really matter how many files or which file you click on but you'll see the date and time here when the file was created all right so we'll just do the first one uh, we'll double click on the first one here but if you want to copy it, well, let's just click on it, and it shows uh, just a file from when my truck was parked in front of the uh, the house here. There we go. Here's some kids walking by, and the video is is very good. I I've, I'm amazed at the video. Okay, anyways. I will close that down. So this is the file you want, right? So you'll right click on it, go to copy, then go into your, your videos where it says uh, favorites or whatever, what have you, over here. Right click on one and just put paste. All right, so now we're gonna go to the video section and there it is, same file number and we have a little icon that's lit up. You double click on that and it should go pretty quick now. There's the two young ladies uh, walking by here. All right. Now, you say, well, how do I get this video up on to YouTube? Okay. Well, we'll just, we can actually just uh, close that and leave that up. Okay. Now I'm signed into my account. Uh, you can click this here, upload button, if you're up there. So you said upload button. I should actually just... There we go. I'll we'll loosen this one. Move it over a bit. Okay, so now I'm in my my account page. Go to the upload button you have here, and when you scroll over or mouse over this, you'll see that it changes colors. Just click on it. Okay, and it'll ask you. And then you go to videos over here. Click on that, and uh, then you have to pick a file. Uh, here we go. It's the first one. There it is right there. So you can say open. And it'll start uploading the video. It goes pretty quick. You have a chance to put your description here. I mean, well, a, a description, a title for your video clip, your description here. And then your tags along here with everything else, how you want to set it up. And that's how you do it.
not a not a big deal pretty easy to do i hope that helped and now on to the next one all right so we're on to number six how do we play or view a uh sorry i have a, a bad habit of looking at the little monitor on the side of the camera instead of directly into the camera uh, how do we review videos we've already taken and that's an excellent question and you, you can do it and there's actually options when you're in there that you can take uh, to uh, browse your um, your selection so let's take a quick look okay now as you can see again the camera's recording so you have to stop it from recording so you're gonna press on this stop recording then you're gonna push the bottom one takes a second then it goes into the camera mode and how you know is this little icon here changes you see how that looks like a camera now now we're gonna press again on that bottom button right here and you can see the icon change again see now it's like a film a little picture of a film okay and all the other icons have uh, disappeared and now you're left with a play and all that down here uh, I don't know what video it's showing. Jeez, what the hell did I record? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right. This is crazy. Um, now to go through your videos, you, these are what you use. You can go up. See, go up to different videos. That's a dark one. Wow. There we go. Oh, there's a video. Okay, so. Now you have your video that you've decided you want to review. So now you just click the select button here. And that's me driving on the highway or roadway with the, um, with the camera on. And you can hear a little bit. Let me just put it up to the, to the microphone here. The audio quality, I mean, it's not that good. But, I mean, I guess if you were talking on it and not, it wasn't the radio, you'd probably hear it better. Okay, so you've had enough of this video, so you want to stop it. So you press down here, I believe, to stop. And it stops the video. And it goes back to the beginning of the video, of that clip, okay? Now, if you want to see what kind of options you have in here, press the menu button. And you're going to see what options you have. Pressing the menu button brings up this menu. You have delete, protect, and slideshow. Of course, it's self-explanatory. Delete is to delete this file, or you can delete all the files. All right, you have that option. The other one is to protect. So if there's a file there you do not want to have overwritten, when the camera fills up, you want to click on that. And the final one where it says slideshow, <coughs> excuse me, you have an option where you can um, pick uh, two seconds, five seconds, and eight seconds on this camera. Yours might be a, a little different by a, a few seconds, maybe uh, two, five, and ten or something. Um, but that what I'll do is I'll go through the beginning, the first clip of every uh, file. So if you have a, your, your camera set to one or two minute uh, sections and then it makes a new file every time, uh, you're going to have a lot of files to go through. Uh, so I set mine for 10, so I have less files. And when I can generally figure out where that video is, because I'll make a mental note, oh, I want to check that video out. I'll look at the clock in the, on the radio in the truck. And um, what, it, what, I, what I'll do is when I get home, I'll just go through that area. And then I only have like three or four files to look through. Makes it a lot quicker. Um, but that's only when I'm downloading. I mean, on the camera, I don't think, I think it's very difficult to see much uh, on the camera. Uh, to get out of this, you just press uh, menu again. Uh, you see, oh, I must have left it too long on that other one. Um, okay. All right, so, because I don't, you can't, this, this, this menu is something uh, we're going to get into after. That's part of, part of the camera. But anyway, so you got at least an idea to see another option that you probably didn't know existed. All right, so let's go back uh, into the camera mode. Press this bottom button here, and it brings you directly, as you can see, back into video camera mode. All right, but it's not recording. So to record, you'll have to push this button again and it'll start recording again, all right? So that's it for this section. Here, how do I know my camera is working on video? There's a good question. This is the video icon, okay? Let's change this icon. First, we have to stop it from recording. Okay, there, it stopped. We'll push 
of course stopping it press this sorry I didn't realize I had the camera that close this is a little confusing doing all this like this you're gonna press here all right and that'll change this icon first click uh, well the first press brings you into camera mode it gives you like a, a what a four by six type uh, setup all right takes off some of the icons that are normally on the camera and it brings you to this one where it says tells you ISO auto okay now I suggest you probably leave most of the the, the settings to auto because it just makes things so much easier all right so now you're in camera mode and if you want to take a picture just press this button and I just took a beautiful picture of my face <laughs> good thing we didn't crack the camera all right and then now to get out of this mode you press it again you're in the review Oh, what's that now? See, that's see that's a new icon. I hadn't seen that before. It's the first time. This this icon is to review your pictures. So obviously there's only one picture there, so there's not really much to do. I guess you can go in the menu and it to ask you if you want to do a slideshow and stuff like that, and that'll just go through all the pictures. But you know these really are not like SLR cameras. They're really made for video capturing. So I really I have no idea why you would want to use this camera. But hey, whatever. This is how you do it, okay? So uh, we'll get back out of that mode. All right, that other menu, don't worry about it. It's, uh, I'll go over that later on. Okay, so let's get back into the, uh, this is the regular camera mode. See how the thing is there, all right? And then, it, like I said, to get into replay mode. So, so those are the different icons you have for this camera, and that's how you would tell if uh, how to use a, a still picture. It tells you about um, th that icon, what it looks like, and what to expect when you're uh, going through it. All right. Well, on to the next one. All right. So, a lot of you, I noticed, you're probably questioning about WDR. What is it? What does it do? Well, in a nutshell, um, what it does is the process there's like a little processor in here and what it does is it helps to um it, well yeah it doesn't help it actually processes every pixel and uh it determines uh whether it needs to open or close the um the shutter but since it doesn't obviously have a shutter uh it, it increases or decreases the exposure value of each pixel allowing uh you notice how sometimes when you go through uh shaded areas or uh, you drive into a tunnel well, this, this, this camera, what it does, the wide dynamic range allows it to um, uh, adjust better for those different light situations. But if you have two lights, like let's say you're driving down the road and you have the sun coming down, beating down in front of you, so it's in your eyes and everything. The camera, will, what it will try and do is reduce the exposure of the camera, uh, the, uh, camera area, the uh, sunlight area, reduce the exposure on that and try and bring up the exposure of the uh, other areas which are a little darker all right caused because of the the light from the Sun so that's what wide dynamic range does is it, it, I don't I really don't know if it applies to these cameras if it really works on them or not but uh, we'll just let's won't we just go and see how we get into dy wide dynamic range and we'll go from there now the camera is already stopped recording press this to, to stop it recording so we're gonna go into the uh, menu all right and the function, go use this button here to go down to WDR. Oh, this is so confusing doing it this way. Oh my lord. Menu, down to WDR, then we press select. And, we're in, uh, and I have mine off because I want to see what it really, for really made a difference. And on these cameras, I hate to say it, but I really don't think it works. Or if it does, it's on all the time. Anyways, we'll select the on. And then we'll turn the menu off. So that's a little bit about WDR. I guess I know I keep looking at the little monitor beside the camera, and I'm sorry about that. It's probably making me look a little cross-eyed. That's how the WDR works. Uh, you can al always look and Google it, and you can get a much deeper understanding of how it works. But like I said, I'm not uh, like 100% sure that it really works for these cameras, or if it's just some BS little icon that's on there. Uh, to make it sound better than it actually is i find that the camera does do very well in light and dark and adjusting to those situations so maybe it does but the on and off feature because i've tried it with it off and i find that it adjusts uh for those different situations pretty well so uh it might always be on it's just something to make it look a little more expensive all right on to the next one
Okay, now you're at the point where we're talking about resolution. All right, so camera here, and we have to stop it from recording, so we press this button here. Little red light stops flashing, go into menu, pressing this button here. And then we use this one to go down one time, click this button for select, and you'll notice that my camera is set to 720p at 30 frames per second. Now, of course, you have the options of 1080, at 30 frames a second, 720 at 60 frames a second, WVGA and VGA. Okay. Now, most times I say, uh, I know a lot of people have ditched them and they say, well, you bought a camera with 1080 HD and you don't use it. Well, the reason I don't use it is for the, for the simple fact that it takes up a lot of memory. And uh, if I catch something, I don't want to have to say, oh, i got to stop my camera. i got to figure out how to protect that file. I'm not going to go to all that trouble, please. 720 is fine and, uh, for me and probably for you too. And anybody that's going to bitch, whine, moan, and complain about 1080 versus 720, I mean, really, get a life. If you're not going to notice any difference. And as far as catching a plate versus 720 and 1080, I don't really think that's going to make much of a difference. All right, if your camera's going to catch it in 1080, it'll catch it in 720, most likely. Uh, if, it's worried, if you're worried about speed of a vehicle moving away from you at a certain speed, um, at 30 frames a second, you should be able to capture one of those frames with a full license plate. If not, 1080 ain't going to catch it any better, all right? I'm telling you that right now. Because the resolution has nothing to do with the... With the, the how fast the the shutter speed or the exposure rate and you need a good exposure rate to capture um these small little things so um because I, I tried it at night and i had the video camera and it was well okay it's at night <laughs> you're not going to see much at night but um 1080 versus 720 is not going to make a difference uh, in my opinion you guys can correct me in the comments you feel free please so for that fact is why I leave it on 720. Another um, another reason, okay, uh, that I, I I just prefer 720 because, like I said, it takes up uh, less memory space, which is important when you you're limited to a certain amount of gigs. Um, uh, the other reason is the uh, the um, the uh, there is no other reason. I just prefer 720. <laughs> You can, oh, yeah, sorry, the, there was, yeah, the amount of video you can actually save on 132 gig card is, is more than 1080, um, and it, of course, your, your amount of video that you can uh, store goes up as you go to VGA. Now, VGA, believe it or not, you should get about 15 hours, and uh, the quality on VGA, I haven't tested it out, I definitely would love to hear from somebody, one of you guys that have tested it out. Uh, so let me know if um, if it's re if there's really much of a difference between the 720 and um, the VGA or the WGA uh, because uh, I noticed I, I had one camera before uh, when I did the first review with this camera and um, I found that uh, during the day the cameras were were uh, were similar you could tell there was a, a difference between the 720 and the VGA. But I was still able to see a license plate of the car directly in front of me, mind you, okay? But uh, I could still see the license plate number. So it might be something uh, one of you guys could, if you feel like experimenting with that, you can let me know and check it out for that. All right, so uh, we've chosen the 720 at 30 frames. 60 frames, uh, again, 60 frames per second will use twice as much um, uh, memory as the 30 frames. And... Uh, this is where 60 frames will help you with catching that license plates at high speed. But apparently, apparently, I haven't, like I said, some things I just really haven't bothered to check out on this because it just doesn't interest me. Uh, I haven't gone that far to check out uh, if these cameras drop frames, but they do inherently drop frames at 60 frames a second uh, just because they can't keep up with the bitrate necessity for that speed and so it, it, to keep up with the processing it, what it'll do what the processor will do it'll just uh, dr start dropping frames so that it can keep up with the processing of the video so keep it at 30 frames in my opinion um maybe if uh, you had this in a stationary location and the most of the background of the camera what it was recording was always the same and it didn't have to re-record it the processor would just kind of won't look at that area 
uh, and process it all the time because it'll just copy it over to the next video, you know, or the next frame per se. So that's another thing. Okay, so we'll just uh, go out of this menu and back into the video mode and start recording again. So that concludes this part. All right, number 11, loop recording. Uh, this is, uh, of course, this is a personal choice of yours, but let's just take a look at it. Uh, you'll have to decide which is best for you. Okay, uh, did I turn off the, yeah, okay. So the camera's not recording, so we're going to go into the menu. We're going to go down to loop recording, which is the second one. We're going to select. Now, you see I have mine set in 10-minute recording loops, all right? But you also have, of course, the selection of going to the off three minutes, five minutes, or ten minutes. Now this might be a little different in your camera. You might have one, five, and ten, or something like that. I set mine in ten minute increments, okay, just so it makes it so that I have less files to, uh, to look at. So we press select, and we're done. All right, so let's get on with exposure. Now, I've, I've just turned the camera around and everything because, uh, to be honest with you, it has gotten to be a little confusing, and I've screwed up a couple of times trying to uh, get this all figured out by pushing the rock button. All right, so we're at a... We're, oh boy, that's a little zoomed in, isn't it? What the hell button did I just push? I'll take a picture. All right, there we go. Now we can see all my fingers and buttons and everything. All right, so we want to get on to uh, number 10, exposures. So always click your menu. We're going to go straight down to exposures. We're going to select, and mine is at 2, so that's way too dark. Let's go down to 0. Now this is the default setting, is 0. All right. So we're going to select that and keep it at that. Now, if you go to, um, let's select it. Let's just try and view this area here. Well, let's just go through it anyways. Let's go to the darkest uh, minimalist exposure, I think is, what, 0.2? Or sorry, minus 2.0. All right, let's select that. Now, you see how the back screen here got really dark? Okay, so that lets you know that the exposures do work. And this is, uh, if it's really bright out, you can put the exposure down. And uh, But it's I, I think that's more good for just taking still pictures. But I, you could, I guess it'll work for video too. Um, well, it will work for the video, but you can leave it on audio, auto and it'll fix it itself. So let's go back to exposures and let's go all the way up to the top. Well, isn't that silly? Close to the bottom one. Anyways, okay, plus 2.0, select. There, you see what it brightened up? Okay, select. Now I keep it at plus 0, 0.0. zero. Yeah, it just seems like it's a good one to work with. And the, the exposure rate, it's automatic, so, you know, you can see is it... I'm trying, whoops. Yeah, I'm looking at the freaking camera. Oh my god. I probably didn't even get all that I'm moving the camera. I'm trying to look at the, the screen here and what's happening is I'm not looking into the uh, screen of the uh, the monitor of the camera. All right, so let's go down to the next one. Motion detector or motion detection. That's on or off. I leave mine off because I'm not trying to catch motion. How this works, put it to on, select, out of menu. All right, we're going to push record. So it's recording right now. You might have to wait a few seconds, or we might have to... Okay, now you see the light has stopped flashing? All right. Somebody passes in front. <gasps> it starts recording. That's all it does. Now, some people have left this, uh, or chosen to uh, have the camera stop recording. Menu go down um have chosen to keep this on or by error you know and they find that when they stop um uh, the camera will stop recording after a few seconds so we'll select off uh that's that makes this part here motion detection that's good if you want to use this as a, a security camera so uh you can just leave the camera sitting on a desk on a bookshelf but remember you have to have 
uh, your 12 volt power here. Okay. Uh, let me just, just fix the zoom on this. So even if I do get the, this camera out of the area that uh, it's still recording, um, down to record audio. All well, that's pretty simple. Uh, you press select it's on and you have that little icon. So let's put it to off. All right. Select and let's turn this. And you notice now that the little icon here, let's bring it up real close so you can see that there's a little line through it. Okay, well that what that does, it just tells you there's no audio. Now when the audio is on, save me coming back and showing you what the icon looks like, that line won't be there and you'll just see the little microphone. Okay, let's go back in here, go down, audio record, on. All right, G sensor. Um, I drive a cargo van when I'm using this uh, camera. Um, it has 10 ply tires and its suspension is made to carry weight. So every little bump I go over, it just seems to uh, start locking up files. Um, I leave mine to off just for that reason. Um, high would probably be way too high of a sensitivity and low, I, I was still getting uh, files locked up with uh, no apparent reason. So for that reason, I have mine set to off. You know, it's a trial and error. If you're driving a car, uh, you could probably set it to lower medium. All right. And uh, you, if you get into an accident, it, low would be more than good enough. But you want to check over and see how many files have been locked up if you set it to low, um, just to see if uh, if it's too sensitive. And uh, if that's the case, you might have to turn it off. All right. So mine's off. Date, time, stamp. This is on or off. And what this does is it just you know it'll daytime stuff that comes at the bottom of your camera it just puts it to on and off it has nothing to do with setting the date and time so we'll leave mine to on resolution and we're back back to the top so now we have to turn it back off or get out of the menu and then we press the menu button twice one two now we get up into the setup mode okay setup mode includes date time now oh okay select that moves it to the next one Duh. and then up and down to change this this, 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 this. Seconds don't they really matter. And then you get here, date, time. Um, you can, what you're doing this just changes your date, month, year around. If you want year, month, day, month, day, year, day, month, year. I keep mine to day, month, year. That's my preference. I'll go here. And then that leads you back up to this. So if you're set up, that's how you set your times and everything. Auto power off. All right. Now, this has to do with the um, with the camera. Once the power has been cut to the camera, all right, so it'll continue to record for the preset amount of times. Um, I don't use it uh, because I just now I just unplug my camera and the batteries are so sucky the camera just shuts off anyway. So it doesn't really apply to me. And the, the camera definitely, I guarantee you, is not going to record for three minutes on my, well, not this one anyways. If you have a capacitor, you might have one, three, and five minutes, uh, instead of the three, five, and 10. Even if you have a battery, you could say one, three, and five. Um, you, you can use it. I mean, it's, again, it's a personal preference. Uh, the batteries might not be able to handle, uh, the amount of time that you're asking and it might shut off which again will corrupt the last file all right so mine is set to off beep sound of course that's just on or off pretty simple languages now i'm just going to show you the languages and everybody's going to choose english and i'll have you know that when you reset the unit um it will go into uh english mode so don't worry about losing that but we'll just go through the uh, languages for anybody else that's watching if they want to see if this camera comes I'm just trying to get it in here okay uh, espanol portugal portuguese i mean dutch italian chinese japanese uh, russian and uh korean i guess <laughs> Oh, like I know what these signs mean from one to the other. Oh my God. Don't, don't, don't take anything what I just said seriously. All right. So that's language is done. Go down TV mode. Uh, this just has to do, uh, and it's really not a big deal in TV mode. Uh, what it has to do with is the, uh, the frequency that it's recorded at or that it plays at. Um, you have NTSC. Now that's uh, North America and uh, Japan. And the rest of it, the rest of the world uses PAL, <laughs> just for an FYI. And we'll go back. 
Um, oh, so, uh, well, anyways, I said North America, you'd use NTSC frequency. Again, this is a North American thing. Select, we have 50 and 60 hertz. 50 hertz is what you would set if you chose PAL, P-A-L, and 60 hertz is what you use in North America and Japan if you've chosen NTSC for the uh, TV mode. So we'll take 60. But again, um, I, if you took 50, you probably wouldn't even notice any difference. I don't think it really makes a big difference on today's TVs. Screen protection, a screen saver. Select three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. You might have a different uh, amount setting here. Don't worry about it. It's just uh, it's the way the, pro the camera was programmed and everything. So um, I set mine to three minutes. Now I'll have you know that um, police can pull you over when this camera is illuminated like this, all right? So you do not want to keep it um, set to off so the camera's on all the time. I mean, the, the screen is on all the time, all right? Uh, because you can get a ticket. And I think most states, and I believe all of Canada, and most likely anywhere in Europe, uh, for having a video monitor that you can uh, you can see from your sitting position while you're driving. So you'll want to set that to the minimum amount. I've chosen three minutes. IR lights, we all know that that's a bunch of crap. They don't have infrared lights. They, of course, have the um, the white LEDs. So we'll select that. We'll put on, select, and you see my little LEDs are on there, which I don't really think they really make a difference. Well, let's see them on my hand. They're probably useless, but anyways. Put them off. Okay. Uh, format card. Your option is our SD cards. I'm not going to format my card because I really don't have a need, but you say format. All data will be deleted, so you have a little bit of protection. It's not like, whoops, ah, oh, damn, it's all, everything's gone. But I can't cancel. Boom, cancel. Default settings. That will return this camera to uh, the original uh, factory defaults. And then the version. This is my version. It might not be yours. Don't get upset if it isn't. As long as your camera works, be happy. All right. So that takes care of all the settings and um, uh, the video settings for the uh, for the dash cam. Now, if we get into the camera, so this this is what I have to go. Look at all these these things you have to go through. My God. All right. So let's get out of the uh, menu here. All right, now you, to get into the camera settings, you have to be in the camera mode. So we have to change this little icon here to camera. And you do that by pressing this button when it's not recording. All right, you see that little hand there? You want to remember what that looks like. How cute that little hand is, like a little wave hand. Yay, whoops, <laughs> just hit the camera. All right, so let's go into the menu and capture mode. This is better. I'm trying to. All right, so capture mode. Now what this does uh, is that uh, if I put two, two S timer, it's a two second timer. The thing will count down two seconds, all right? And then it's single. And then if you push single, it'll when you press to take a, a picture, it'll take just one picture. So we, I leave mine on single because I never use the camera. I really couldn't care less about the camera on this, but I figure maybe some of you guys would. So this is why I'm gonna go through this. Resolution. Now these are megapixels, so at five megs, eight megs, 10 megs, 12 megs, and then it goes to its lowest setting of 1.3, VGA, two meg HD. Oh, huh. I wonder if that'd be any good. Two meg HD, I don't know. Anyways, like I said, never use this for a camera, so I leave mine on five megs. Now down to sequence. Now what sequence does is it, um, what did I say it did? Sequence, sequence. I didn't make it a, a little note. I believe what sequence does is it takes three pictures in a row. So, well, here, let's just try it out just to be sure so that uh, go out of the menu. And let's take a picture. There you go. Three pictures. You heard it? Make a little picture sound. So we'll get out of that. Go down into sequence. Turn it off. All right, so that's what sequence does. Pretty simple, huh? So I guess if so, if you've had it set for like a two-second timer, five-second timer, or a ten-second timer, it'll still take uh, when you have it sequence selected. It'll take those boom, 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 three pictures. Okay, quality, fine, normal, or economy. Now, of course, this has a lot to do with how much room it takes on your memory card. Um, 
I, I'll leave mine for fine. You've got a 32 gig card in there. It should be more than enough to handle um, a, a bunch of pictures. All right, sharpness. Normal, strong, or soft? I leave mine for normal. I mean, how, I, I'm not going to try to start changing all these settings to take a picture. Just leave it in one thing. I mean, most people, even if you get a single uh, one of those little uh, digital cameras, all you're going to do is uh, you want to take it out of your pocket and snap a picture. You don't want to start going through all this and start making uh, all these uh, changes. White balance. Whoops. Of course, I chose... Uh, well, I won't. I didn't choose it. it. Just happens to be here. I would choose auto. I won't start going into this unless, like I said, you plan on taking now. Although fluorescent tungsten, you know, these things actually do make a difference on the uh, type of picture and how it'll turn out. So if it's something that's important to you, you might want to check uh, check that before you're taking a picture and make a make a choice. Color normal, black white sepia. Um, if you want to take your, your picture in black and white or use sepia. You know, these, if you are a photographer, and I really don't know why a photographer would want one of these, but hey, you never know. I leave mine in normal, but you can take black and white pictures too. Uh, ISO. Now, this is something I do know something about. Auto. Now, that will just automatically select the exposure rate of the, um, of the shot. Now, 100 would be used on uh, bright days. And then two is something that most camera people uh, would use for outdoor photography or you know general photography where they didn't have to where they wanted like a, a balance between the one and two hundred and then four hundred for darker areas or shaded areas is what you would use um, the four hundred for more shadowed or shaded areas from the sun uh, the four hundred would bring up more of the light but you would become more grainy which is another thing to remember so it's as high as it goes is four hundred so I leave mine on auto. Ah, uh, exposure. I know I'm sounding frustrated because this is really boring, especially on the camera part. Um, okay, I just it's the same thing as the um, as the video camera. Okay, basically. Whoops. One, oh, jeez. Push the wrong button. See, it goes up to two, minus two, and then boom. I'll leave it on zero. Okay, anti shaking. Now I think this is really a nifty idea to have on the camera. So I turned my on. You have on or off. So I left mine on. What it does is, um, it's actually a stabilizer. It helps to uh, stabilize the shot. So if you do, if you are one of those people who are prone to shake a little bit, um, it'll help to uh, soften it or uh, completely eliminate it. HDR. I got no idea what it means. I don't even have an option here. It's on or it's on so um maybe somebody wants to tell me what it is because i have no idea uh date time stamp of course uh daytime date or off which is nice to have if you just want the date you don't want the time on there and too you know because it, yeah, it takes up and i um, to be honest with you i don't even like having that stuff on not on a picture video yes but on a picture yeah um so we've done that so now we have to go out of this menu then we'll press it again twice, and you get into the setup menu. And the setup menu is the same thing I already went over in the um, in the video thing. All right, so we'll just uh, turn that off. All right, we'll get out of the uh, camera mode. Well, now we're in the uh, review mode. Now you notice there's a little bit of a different uh, uh, little emblem or thing here. Um, that will tell me that this is a picture review and if you go down now you see it's changed because this is a video review all right so i hope this really clears up any questions you have concerning this camera um okay well i hope that really helps clear any questions you have concerning this camera uh, if you have some leave them in the comments and uh, i'll i'm really i work hard to try and get back to everybody um Right now there hasn't been too many so i'm able to address everybody and uh so far i've been lucky i've been able to uh find answers and fixes for anybody's questions so i would really appreciate it if you could subscribe uh well what can i say my name's john thanks for watching